Hey, Stacey, welcome to the show. Hey, Jason. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Stacey, I really wanted you on the show because we were talking about essentially the civil liability of companies after a criminal thing may have happened, right? So obviously we're criminal defense attorneys. We see the front end of these things, but there's a lot of fallout that happens with this stuff. And you were talking about a couple of specific examples where a company can be essentially liable for a huge bill afterwards. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, recently, um, and this came as a surprise to me because it was one year we had, I had three different high net worth personal lines clients who sustained really large losses. Um, and it was related to the construction company. So they hired reputable construction companies. Um, there's been a shortage of employees <laughs> and being able to get people to work. And what happened was these construction companies want to take on these jobs and they hired people that maybe they shouldn't have. And if mm. the employee pool was greater, wouldn't, you know, would have properly vetted. Um, and what happened ultimately is that they stole. And one was a company that had stole a hundred and $170,000 worth of items. And one of them was the wife's shoes that she wore on her wedding that had um, a special type of, I'm not even sure, like a medallion type thing on, on the shoes that was the grandmother's. And it was just like, there was sentimental value there, but also $170,000 worth of high-end purses and different things. The contractor, you know, you feel for both sides because the contractor also, right? They had crime coverage, but did not have third party crime, which would have picked up for their employees that were on the job and taking from a client. So now the insurance company and every once in a while I get an update on the subrogation efforts is going after this company looking for that money. Um, I had another one that was less, but it was $8,000. Let's, 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 let's stay with that one right there. Cause I found sure. it super fascinating. You say they actually had insurance for crime coverage. So does that mean, what did that cover? Like if them themselves stole something, like what did that actually cover? If it didn't cover the scenario that you talked about? It, so third party is ultimately like one of your employees steals okay. from a, a customer. Um, having the first party crime coverage just wouldn't, it wouldn't kick in. That's if ultimately protects you and your business if someone were to steal yeah. from you. Got it. So if, so the difference was if the employee stole something from the actual head contractor, then that would have been covered. Like stole his car, stole his depending wedding. on what happened. Yeah, that's a different right. type of loss. Yes. Yeah. But this it's you really need to have the, the and it's such a low cost. You know, if you have crime coverage to add the third party is just so low cost. Right. Um, so it's it's just it's kind of a no brainer, but it's something that a lot of people don't don't think about. And and oftentimes sometimes the agent might not be offering it all the time either. You know, sometimes it takes a shakeup like that to see this happening over and over again. And for, for the insurance companies to do that. And I, I mean, I push all my contractors to have it because it's just, again, low cost and it, it saves your butt, you know, in a lot of situations. Right. And you said you had another scenario also that was very interesting. Yeah, it was just, it was a, um, this, and this was a really tricky one because the owner of the company, it was his hired, his son oh who, you know, and he knew that he had some issues with drugs. He had been arrested before, <laughs> probably someone that may have wanted to see you. Um, and what, you know, it's your kid. What do you do? You always hold out hope that they're going to be okay. You give them the first opportunity. And that's exactly what this dad and business owner did. And he ended up stealing $8,000 worth of items, stole a bicycle and stole some other things right out of the garage. Um, yeah. And they were doing a job refinishing hardwood floors. And it's those, it's those situations. You just, you feel for everybody. You know, even the, the, uh, my client was like, you know, what a terrible situation. I have kids, you know, you would never want to be in that situation. Um, but those, those things happen. Sometimes even the people you trust the most in the world. So in that situation, if they had third party coverage that would have been covered by the insurance policy. The, the son is still considered an employee because he is not an owner of the company. Okay. But what if um, it's a situation like that where the father really should have known that the son could have those tendencies versus your first scenario? They didn't really know. They didn't do due diligence. It seemed like a little bit different in terms of the knowledge aspect. Well, if they had Googled, they would have known because as soon as I did, yes. I knew. <laughs> but <laughs> in fair, yeah, you're right. I guess it would, 
was a dad trying to do something wrong? You know, there, was there truly yeah. negligence? Was he trying to to do something wrong? He didn't have a part in this. You know, this to me is a, a father that was just trying to do the best thing for his son and may not, may or may not have known what exactly his son was into in that moment. Right. Right. That's exactly right. And people do turn things around and people do are, are on the way to recovery are able to mm-hmm. live very healthy and happy lives. Um, but it is, you know, we see that all the time. It is a constant struggle and people do have issues with it. And that doesn't mean that's going to be the situation that you have now. It just might be a situation where, you know, they have a, a tough day here and there. Uh, But obviously, where you have a a situation where there's so much stuff stolen from another individual and innocent victim, that's that's a very just a very sad story all around. Yeah, it is. And and that's how you feel on most of these, because it's just it's some no, none of these were intentional. You know, they didn't mean to get into the situation. And and here they are. And now, you know, in in both of those, the business owners are staring down the barrel of having having to pay that money. Of course, in eight thousand dollars, it's very different right? Then, then the other one, which I, it was landed somewhere between 160 and $170,000, right? Yeah. Like that, that's serious money. That is money that can put a business under. Right. Um, and you know, and, and what's going to end up happening, they, they don't pay that you end up with a judgment against you, right? Because eventually that's what happens. You know, you can't, you don't pay it and it goes to court. So Stacey, when, uh, that's not the only thing that you focus on. Obviously, it's one of the products that you offer. But when should people be calling you? When should you be calling people, talking talk to Stacey and, and really getting your advice and, 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 and products? So when should people be calling you? Honestly, um, if you have insurance, you want to be talking to a reputable agent, right? If it's right. myself or um, who, whoever it might be out there. And I always tell people that you should also get a second opinion. Right. So in, in insurance to me, you know, we always watch the rates, but it should be shopped and looked at at least every three years. And I have people that will come to me and just say, Hey, do you mind just taking a peek at this and, and let me know if there's any holes here, any gaps. And I'm happy to do that. Like I'll, I'll do that for anyone go through and say, Hey, you know what, you've got a great program. (laughs) Keep, keep doing what you're doing, or here are some holes. I would ask these questions um because to be honest the way I look at it is that if I you know a lot of times insurance can be a very big relationship business so I'm happy to help and guide people in any way I can and I hope for the opportunity to be their next agent you know because things change in this industry I think the big difference with you is everyone I send you they, they love the personal service that you give people you really talk to them like they're a family member you really have that personal touch that people really look for um, but Stacey, you know, we talked about a lot of commercial uh, insurance today, but that's not the only thing that you do. You also help people with the individual. So what what type of individual, you know, insurance is such a big word, right? There's a lot of different things, but what type of products um, would you be able to help people with? I do a lot. I, I do a lot of insurance for successful families and business owners, because a lot of times there can be crossover between the commercial for the business owner and the personal lines. Um, and we are licensed in all 50 states. So a lot of people will come to me because they'll have, you know, the condo in Boston, the co-op in New York City, and the place in Palm Beach. And I always tell people that with insurance, if you're with me or you're with somebody else, you should have it all under one roof. Because you always want the left and the right hand communicating with each other. And that's where you have a breakdown. But we've been able to do things where, you know, we insure the business and the business requires a hundred million dollar umbrella. But on the personal line side, we're, you know, we're able to write a five million with a personal extension, giving them access to that full, full limit on the commercial side. So, you know, that just gives us more ways to get creative. But I always tell people to make sure that, you know, as much as possible, you have everything under one roof. And you're not going to an agent in New York for one piece, an agent in Boston for another, and an agent in Florida, because then we all don't know what you have. Um, and then we can't advise on the right limits sometimes, right, in terms of an umbrella or whatnot. But That's exactly right. You have people with the whole idea of business now, just in different states, if you need two different people, or even the same state, in your, your business, you have one person, your home, you have another. But with a lot of flow throughs that we see now, sometimes people's biggest asset, whether it's personal or not, is their business, right? And mm-hmm. when they don't look at both of those things, they may be underassured 
they might be overinsured. They may be paying right. that they don't need to because they have this gigantic policy on one side or the other that's not really talking to the other people. So it's kind of funny how with other aspects of our lives, we would never do that, right? But when it comes to, <laughs> so we would never think about going to a doctor who's not going to talk to our other doctor, right? We just wouldn't do that. But uh, we wouldn't have our general contractor not talk to our electrician because uh, it's the same house. But because it's insurance and there's just so many different types, there's so many different people that operate in different um, states. Uh, it's, it's awesome that you guys have that reach that you can really just put everything under one roof, which is so important. Yeah, it is. I think that's a, a big differentiator for us um, is that we do right in all 50 states. We do have international capabilities because now we have a, a lot of businesses that are, you know, right. all around the world. So it's yeah, it is. It is nice to be able to offer that to our clients. Well, Stacy, thanks for coming on today. Hopefully we won't have any insurance bad news out there, but there is. We'll have right. to explain it to us. <laughs> Sounds great. Thanks so much for the opportunity, Jason. I appreciate it.